<laughs> Listen, Mama's famous, y'all. Yeah, Mama's famous. Mama. Everyone, shout out, Mama. <laughs> you not seen that vine? <laughs> no vine. <laughs> Break the vine. Break the right. vine. Break the vine. We're getting holy discs up in here. Oh, yeah. What skill set? <laughs> yeah. um, Alrighty, guys, welcome back to the Korean Cowboys podcast. Yes, we are in season three now. Can you believe it? And as you guys know, we have switched up the format of our show a little bit. So we're hoping for a lot of engagement. And we are going to be having the most fabulous, the most incredible guests ever. Yes. Now, Aaron, please, will you do the honors? Who do we have today? Yes, everyone. I'm sure you guys know. She's right here in the middle. We have Alexa in the studio with us today. Alexa, Alexa, we have a love, a strong, talented queen in the studio, <laughs> don't you know? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, you know, we're not like most other podcasts or most other um, radio shows, but there's only one thing that we have to have you do, and that is to introduce yourself in English uh-huh. and in Korean, too, if you want, okay. into the camera right here, please. I thought you were going to say introduce yourself in a southern accent. Oh, you do that, too. <laughs> oh. We can do that. Okay. Well, all right, then. Hooey! <laughs> Hello, howdy there. My name's Alexa. I'm born and raised in Oklahoma. My mama's Korean and my daddy's white, and that explains me. Um, I came to Korea in 2019, and I done debuted my song, Bomb, and now I am doing the thing still in Korea. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, I don't know. I think, was that a real accent from Oklahoma? Is that really how they talk? Oh, I've never been there. I don't know. You would not, yeah, he thought Oklahoma was Ohio. But yeah, you've never been to Oklahoma. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I've never Oklahoma. really been over okay. there before. Geographically on the map. Geographically. So you know Texas? Yeah, yeah. Right about Texas. All right, that right sounds about Texas. right then. Okay, that's okay. So sounds about right to me. Okay. They call the yee, but like not as much as Texas. Mm. You know? It kind of like, fits with the yeehaw, the cowboy thing that we got going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome uh-huh. to the Korean Cowboys. Oh, my God, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so were you, were you born and raised in Oklahoma or? Yes, yeah, so that's the thing. So my mom is from Seoul, actually. Okay. She was debuted, not debuted. Oh my God, oh. <laughs> Listen, mama's famous, y'all. Yeah, mama's famous. famous. Everyone, shout out mama. <laughs> she was adopted when she was five. And then my dad's from Queens, New York. Whoa, wow, okay. And then they met in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then I happened. And then I lived there till I was 21. Then I moved here. Wow. wow. How, how is Oklahoma? I've never been. I mean, not gonna lie, people are like, oh my God, like, do you like riding horses? Oh, like, <laughs> hay like, bales. <laughs> hay bales. No, I should not there. There are hay bales, though. Like, oh, I'm sure that was is. actually yeah. a place people in high school mm-hmm. went to go hang out. They'd be like, hey, you wanna go like hang out at the hay bales later? Go to the farm. Go to the farm. Let's go, go like, cow tipping. Cow man. tipping. <laughs> no, that's the thing that happened. Really? That is, that is the th- I never participated, but that is the thing that happened. Wow. But, so it is a little bit of yeehaw, <laughs> but at the same time, it's pretty urban, I'd say. Not okay, like okay. New York City or LA. Mm-hmm. But. La. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's not crazy. that urban. Lots of cows, lots of hay bales, lots, lots of, of pitchforks. Oh, yeah. And cornfields, all corn that fields. stuff. Oh, we know, love it. We love it. Visit us on the regular. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you mentioned you said you came to Korea in 2019. So how, how did you end up in Korea? That is a very long story that I will try to condense. Yeah, yeah of course. No, no, take your time. We're a long time. podcast. So yeah, you, yeah. you Gucci. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Okay, it's there. Basically, in 2016, I stumbled across this K pop cover contest called. Uh, Rising Legends, and it was held by the K-pop website Soompi. I'm sure you know. Okay, okay. I used to be subscribed and a user of that website on the forums (laughs) before I was a K-pop idol. Exposed. (laughs) Um, And so they held this online contest, and basically it was like three categories, rap, dance, and singing. I competed in the dance category, and I won first place that year. Wow. Mm. And then the following year, the the contest was held again, but, oh, wait, I missed the important part. It's in collaboration with, like, a QXA, like a Korean QXA. So the first year, it was in collaboration with JYP. Oh, wow, okay. And the next year, 2017, it was in collaboration with Cube. Mm. Okay, cool. And so since nothing really came from my audition with JYP, I was kind of like, okay, it's not really worth it. Then I'm not going to try. Yeah, yeah. Then I got an email from one of the Soompi staff in 2017, literally, I think two days before the submission deadline closed. She was like, hey, you know, we were really looking forward to your submission this year. Like, are you going to join the contest? Because, you know, this year it's a really big prize. Mm. And I was like, okay, I am persuaded. I will will play your little games. (laughs) (laughs) I'm interested. (laughs) And so I submitted my video, um, got through all the rounds. I wound up winning the dance category again. Wow. But I also got the most overall votes within the entire competition. So that garnered me a two-week trip to Korea. So that was towards the end of 2017. I came here. 
Uh, I actually filmed like a mini reality series of like the making of a K-pop star. Oh, so, no, that's okay. literally what it was called. Like, it's mm. called uh, really like, creative in the names department, though. I mean, I come mean, on. <laughs> and it was filmed by my current company, which is Zany oh. Bros. I know they filmed a lot for yeah, 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 Tiny Bros. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tiny Bros. Yeah, but um, so that's how I first met my company, and oh. so. I filmed the thing in Korea, went home, and then like, or literally not too long after my birthday, I think, is when I got contacted in 2017, and they were like, "Hey, so you didn't pass the Cube audition, mm-hmm. but you know the people that were filming you, they're interested in making their own entertainment company, Ooh. and they want to take you on as a trainee and try to get you on the next season of Produce. What you think about that?" Oh, okay, so that okay. that is where the timeline sits. Then. It was the first. No, no, wait. Was it the first one? The third one, right? Yeah, first okay. 48. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 48. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. 2017. Hmm. Okay. And then produce 20, 24. Oh my God, produce. <laughs> <laughs> produce 48 was in 2018, starting in April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, it feels like yesterday. That's so, wild. So, like, like, you went on these, like, competitions, auditions, or whatever. You got first place for dancing. Uh-huh. Right, like, so were you always interested in the arts when you were younger? Did you always want to be a performer? Or mm, how I did mean, that come about? So my mom, being the mother that she is, she enrolled me in dance classes when I was like, oh, baby. Like, mm. I, as soon as I learned to walk, she's like, okay, now you can do pirouettes. What? So, <laughs> what now? Pirouette. What's pirouette? It, it's a ballet term. Yeah, ballet, yeah. Oh, I don't even know that. Uncultured. <laughs> oh, apparently. <laughs> Look at me swine. over here. It's from swine. the boonies. I don't know what's swine. going on. Oh, you oh. think you're from the boonies? Excuse <laughs> me? <laughs> you got to see my... Watch, oh, watch. go on my YouTube channel. You'll see my, my real house. Anyway. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> um, anyways. A little plug. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, so I started dancing at a super young age. I kind of always had aspirations to be a performer, mm-hmm. not okay. necessarily always to be a K-pop idol because mm-hmm. it didn't start out that way. Right. But, you know, I just wanted to be on stage. I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to, you know, perform in front of people. And then mm-hmm. come 20, 2008, I'm so used to saying 20 something now, 2008, that's when I first discovered K-pop. Okay. Oh, and wow. who was that? So... Y'all probably know him. I got to know K-pop because of Henry from Super Junior. Oh, oh Henry. Oh, Henry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what up, Henry? What up, Henry? Check, what up, check it out. I still never met you, but I talk about you a lot because I get I'm asked trapped. these questions all the time. <laughs> like a kitty in a cage. Oh. <laughs> like a puppy in a box. Well, he's around. Fire. You'll run into him eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> Word. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because my friend and I had to do a project over Chinese pop culture. And she was like, oh my God, let's do it over Super Junior M and Henry. And I was like, Super Buddha oh. what in the who from the what? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. That makes sense. And so she took me to her house after school and then showed me Super Junior. And so that's my gateway drug. She, sorry, I'm sure she sorry, saw sorry, sorry, sorry. She saw the violin and she done fell out. She knows it, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. I'm listen, I was in high school when, when Super Junior M came out. So I I knew who they are. But anyway, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, anyway, our ancient. I told you, I told you, you know, we talk a lot on this podcast. Right <laughs> yes. Himself. All right. So you got ex- uh, accepted into Zany Bros, ZB label. Yes. And you ended up coming to Korea after your little two week stay thing. So you became a real trainee, right? And I'm sure anybody that's a K pop fan, they know, like, you hear all these things about trainee life and all this. Like, what it was it like for you? Because, you know, mm-hmm. we did a whole episode on it, but like everyone's experience is different, different right, now, you know? Right. So, like, yeah. what was yours like? I mean, phew. okay. So, basically, I was a trainee for a total of about six months total before I debuted. Oh, wow. That's short. But I mean, I think it's just because I took a lot of dance classes and stuff back in the States. Right, right. So, she you were like already learn, prepared. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I had like a skill set. I just needed to sharpen the knife, you know? Oh, okay, okay. She had the gibongi, you know? The gibongi. The gicho. No, well, she had all that. Really <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I was basically training every single day of the week, but I specifically had classes on Tuesday and Thursday for uh, dance hall and Afrobeat training. What's Afrobeat? Afrobeat. She's using all these words. I don't know what she's talking about. Like, so Afrobeat's <laughs> a genre of music, but I mean, Korea is still not quite like uh, familiar with it. Mm-hmm. But like, I used to specialize in those genres specifically as a trainee. It really helps with like finding your center of gravity and lowering your core whenever you're mm. dancing. So oh, you're not, okay. It's basically the opposite of everything I knew growing up because as a ballet dancer, you're so upright and you're very stiff and you're very right. like... It to be light on your feet. Poised, you know? like, exactly. Mm. But like dance on Afrobeat, it's very low to the ground, very like hard hitting and very groovy. You sit mm. in that pocket, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I focus on that. But then I took classes at a different dance studio. I had a weekly, I like Chukon Pyonga and everything. Oh, oh yeah, no, it brings up memories. War, fl- war flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. But for me, they changed because normally I would just have like a 
dance I would cover and then like I would do like a minute of live singing. But then when it got closer to my like debut time, my company started like she killing to me like to do an actual live performance for mm-hmm. Jungga instead of doing them like Daro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's how that wound up happening and then debut. So like, okay, so you mentioned that you were the first the first trainee to come over for this yes. company. So was there only you training? Like, were you the only one? Like, what? Because you know, yeah. I when I was training, I had a lot of people. Like, we had a lot of people that we knew. Yeah, groups, yeah exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, there's a mosquito alive in the wintertime. This is wild. <laughs> anyway. Alive. Oh man. But um, what do you call it? Uh, so you're first of all, you're a Korean American. Yes. And you came over here. Did you speak Korean? Like, what was your skill set at? Like, what, what? How was it? My skill set. Oh. Um. Oof, my skill set. What skill set? Yeah. What skill set? <laughs> um, no. I'm because, with your sister. Because. So, I mean, like I said earlier, my mom was adopted when she was five. And right. she was raised by a lovely white family in the South um, her whole life. So, she did not remember any Korean, nor was she around Korean people or the culture growing up. Right, right. So, you know, of course, in her adult life as a mother, she can never share that with her kids. Okay. So, you know, eventually when I was in college, I taught myself how to read and write Korean. Oh, wow. So, like, if you put a word in front of me, I could read it. Or, like, if you told me a word, I could write it. But then I wouldn't know what the hell it meant. Like, you'd yeah, be like, yeah. Gogi. I'd be like, okay, Gogi. Or like, you would like read like Changmoon. I'd be like, okay, Changmoon. But I'm like, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, but no, like, I still have that problem though. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> don't you? Yes, very you're, you're much so. Oh, you still you still grooving into the the, the Korean still aspect of things. Still finding my swing of things. Can you read a newspaper? I can't read oh, a newspaper. Lord, no. <laughs> Politics and science. Yeah, and I have no <laughs> idea what any of that says either. Like, I'll read it. I'll be like. What the I hell pretend like I, I just know. Read? Like, what? Oh, I read this yesterday. You I'm know. just looking at the spiggles at this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a maze to me. Mm. But yeah, wow. um, like, so when you first came to Korea, like, were you apprehensive or did you have any fears or concerns about moving to a completely like different country, mm-hmm. right? Did you have any, you know? <sighs> I mean, so that's the thing. I lived in America till I was 21. So I was like an adult by the time I came to Korea. You know, right. I've mm. held down jobs before I went to college. I was used to like life experience. So I wasn't like too scared, honestly, but... Even though being an adult, a young adult of that, my parents were kind of apprehensive because, like, you know, the yeah, media loves to display the dark side of K-pop mm. and show, like, all the bad stereotypes that people tend to think about the industry and everything. And, of course, you know, my parents would go online, look things up, and they'd see these things. You're like, oh, my God, our daughter's going to go to the dark side. <laughs> oh, no. But, like, you know, thankfully, you know, people in my team, my company that wanted to recruit me, they were in contact with my parents, very open, very honest, and trust- trustworthy people. Okay, and so okay. my parents were literally like, okay, we don't trust the industry, but we trust you with our daughter's life. Yeah, so yeah, that's good. Mm. No pressure. No it's pressure good to have some trust able. in your company. That's a good thing. So, <laughs> so like when you, when you first came to Korea, what did you find hard to adapt to? Like what was hard Ooh. to adapt? I mean, for one, uh, definitely the use of <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. Because, yeah. so the thing is, I, when I first learned Korean here in Korea, I would go to Hagwon. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, they teach you Jeondaemar. And so, you know, when I went on to produce and with like the little Korean I knew, you know, I would be speaking to girls that are like 14 or 15 in Tondemar. And they'd be like, on me, you can like talk com- comfortably <laughs> to me. And they're like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> and and it's uh, like, I, I didn't understand. And it, it's still kind of uncomfortable for me to like speak in Panmar because I'm so used to just speaking formally. Mm. But that plus the subway system. <laughs> the subway oh, really? system. Yeah. Like, listen, listen, Linda. Well, when you're from Oklahoma and there's no subway, <laughs> you know, I mean. Okay, not just that, but like I drove everywhere in the States, you know, I was used mm-hmm. to vroom, vroom, get out my car. Mm. And like, then I came. Are you from <laughs> London or are you from Oklahoma? <laughs> where, where are you from? Have you not seen that Vine? <laughs> no, Vine? How old, you, how old are you? Okay, you know Vine though, right? I know, I know Vine, Vine is. is. I know yeah. Vine is, yeah, I don't, I don't use Vine. Vine, okay. it's like a decade ago. It's like a slight gap between each of us. Just, <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I was used to driving everywhere. And so mm-hmm. getting on the subway, I would get lost all all the freaking time. And it didn't help that when I first came here, I still had an American SIM card. So oh. I, I had to use a Wi Fi egg and it would die on the subways. So I'd be like, which stock do we get off of? Wi Fi eggs. Like, wow. I haven't heard of a Wi Fi egg. Throwback. Ever. Yeah. Wi Fi eggs. <laughs> but yeah, I got lost a lot. Like, you could ask my company, like, back when I had to do, like, Pyongyang and everything, sometimes I would be one or two hours late because I would get on the wrong train, go the wrong way. Yeah, the subway system is a little confusing, though. Yeah, but I'm a master at it now. I That's don't right. need no mm-hmm. app. I don't mm. need a map. <laughs> we know. It's easy. You know, it's, it's once you get used to the city life. I mean, yeah. the town or city that you were from, I mean, you say you're from Oklahoma mm-hmm. then you was it a small like a township or a village or like, <laughs> a was village? It, like oh, what, what, what's the what's you the know, dealio it was just a friendly little village we had like a saloon and everything a saloon, yeah, a saloon. did you ride horse and buggy through I, the streets I did. <laughs> my, daddy. <laughs> yeah. my daddy was a farmer oh was he mm. Mm, okay. <laughs> he done raise the cows for slaughter you do that accent really well thank you I don't take pride in it really we should get you in like some <laughs> kind of old accent. west movie yeah. mm. 
That's Hateful Eight or Glorious, <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of those old movies. Um, yeah, so you went through the awesome training process. You got lost on all the subways and, and you know, all that stuff. How about food? I'm, I always ask this question. Okay, when yeah, you, how is food like when you first Because you did say your mom was adopted. So, I yeah. mean, so maybe they, she might not have prepared a lot of Korean food when you guys were, when you were younger. Mm -hmm. Did she, like, did you have a problem eating a lot of the food in Korea? Oh, girl, no. Oh. Because, so, I mean, y'all know the stereotype about how certain people don't like to season their food. Mm. Um, even though I am half of that certain people, we always had flavor. We always had like seasoning in our cabinets. So, I mean, mm -hmm. both my parents, fortunately, were really good cooks. So okay. later on in life, when I still lived at home, my mom learned how to make kimchi tzatziki. Oh, wow. okay. And we also bought one of those grills because she would marinate like her own bulgogi and we would do that oh. at home. Um, beyond that, so, well, sometimes she made sunzubu, sometimes. Oh, that's, wow. that's like making all the, the real the real deal mm -hmm. Korean food. Yeah. yeah. Like when we were younger, we didn't really, she didn't really cook it, but we would go out to eat. Like Korean like, restaurants. Korean restaurants restaurants okay. or like you know thai japanese we had a very flavorful palate in my mm. family so korean Not, food was no that surprises me they have korean restaurants in oklahoma they had like two <laughs> and okay, one okay, of okay. them was bad is, so, there, okay. is there like a big like korean population out there just wondering no no like there's a lot of like uh Hmong people actually okay Hmong Hmong and people, uh. a handful of definitely i think vietnamese was a big population mm. but when it came to koreans i knew two korean people in high school and that was it wow really? yeah mm, look at you now K-pop star. I mean, we love the story, don't we? The motherland. <laughs> so you came to Korea, you did the training process, and then you heard that you were going to debut. <gasps> oh, yes, yes, okay. yes you, so when you heard that you were going to debut, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, oh my God, I'm finally going to be a K-pop star. How did you feel? What was the reaction? What do? Uh, well, do you want the actual story of how I found out I was going to debut? I mean, I mean, whatever you are want to tell us. Are we going to get in trouble? I mean, <laughs> this is this oh, no, all you. It, it's already out there. I, I've told this before in a different podcast okay. I was on, but I will tell you since, you know, first time hearing this. Yeah, yeah. So, um, basically, I was at the company one day, and mm -hmm. then our creative director approaches me, and she's like, hey, you know, the CEO really wants to talk to you. He seems like, you know, really, like, serious right now. Like, I think something's wrong. And in my head, I'm like, did I mess up? Did I do something wrong? Because I was like, when I was a trainee, I constantly messed up a lot. Like, not on purpose, of course. Yeah, but like, of course. You know, when you don't know the system, you mess up. Mm, yeah. And so this time I was like, shit, like, what did I do this time? Like, what did I do? And she was like, okay, so you might want to go talk to him. Like, I think he really wants to talk to you. And so I was like, dang, yeah, okay. So I go to his office, we sit down, and basically the conversation is like, and like, oh, how have you been? How's, how's training been? And I'm like, it's, it's been good. He's like, do you think you're improving? And I'm like, I, I would say so. You know, I think we're getting better and better. Mm -hmm. But it's like, do you think you have the skill set to debut? Um, and I was just like, okay. uh, <laughs> we can squeeze it out. We can squeeze it out. It was basically just, <laughs> I was basically so lost in thought. And then he said to me, he's like, you know, how many people from these survival shows, do you know, that you've seen and that you've been on have actually successfully debuted? Yeah. And I was just like, that took me back. Cause I was like, wait, you're actually kind of right. And then it kind of went on to like, what is your worth to us in the company? Like what value Whoa. do you hold for us to keep you? Oh, and so I was okay. like, um, I, um, I, I'm kind of okay at dancing and singing. And <laughs> I, 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 I like what I'm doing. And so he like whips out this envelope and he's like, okay, inside this envelope, it's a one way ticket back home to Tulsa. It's going to completely like nullify your debut name and, and cancel any plans we had. And you're just going to go back to being just Alex. Like there's not going to be an Alexa or anything. Okay. And I was like, <sighs> I was like trying to hold back tears this whole time because I was like, I worked so hard for, granted, not like years, like some of these other trainees do like 10 years or so, but you know, it's still a long time in my life, mm, you know, that I spent yeah. working hard and I was just so gutted in that moment. And so I opened the envelope, I take the paper to look at said ticket. Little piece of paper says, congratulations, you're debuting. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, and I was Bling! Like, oh, it's kind of sweet, but it's like a very unique way to announce your debut, though. I, 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 I feel like it's a very like Korean way of like. Mm. Do they do they jiggle it? So oh. I was like, Where is this? Can we look this up on YouTube? I want to oh, see oh, this. Oh yeah, there's clips. There's Everyone, clips. check it out if you haven't seen it yet. We want to. Oh, we want to watch that. Lord. Yeah, it's, it's almost like it's almost like being scolded by a parent for like no reason, and then all of a sudden it's like it's okay. You can have cake. Like you know what I mean? Exactly. It's like what? It's like messed up, but here's your new car. Yeah, it's like a very Korean way of doing things. Yeah. That's funny. We so like yeah, that though. That's how uh, that happened. Then I immediately FaceTimed my mom and I told her everything. I'm going to be doing this. It's not coming out. I pranked her because I told her what my CEO had told me and she okay. was believing like, 
oh no, you're going to come home now. Okay. Um, well, she was like, mom, zoom behind the goyal. But I, then I was like, just kidding. I'm debuting. And she was like, oh my God. Did your mom cry? Like, oh my God. My mom and I cry so easily. Oh really? She was also a dramatic mess. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? When you're about to hear that you're going to debut, it's okay to be a dramatic mess. Yeah. I definitely think so. Approved. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's weird. You're like, I don't, I don't really remember anything about my debut. I don't either. <laughs> it was so kind of long. like you're debuting. And then that was it. Like, yeah, that was okay. pretty much like, what it was for me too, I think. Get ready by like, next Sunday. You yeah. know, it was like that, you know. It was like, get ready. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, okay. This is something that like, I think every K-pop artist can relate to. So when you first do your debut stage, right? Your mm -hmm. first album or whatever, you know, you go out and you, you, you do all this preparation and you, you go up on, on stage and you actually stand on stage sometimes with people that you were once a fan of or still a fan of. Yes. Okay. Is there some of that going on? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I debuted literally right before the pandemic hit. Right. Okay. Because it was October 2019. Oh, that is right before. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, literally yeah. right before, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> oh we all know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so during... Well, technically, my first mbang was actually Simply because, you know, they did, like, such a little fun that it comes out the same Global. day yeah, as yeah. Music Bank, though. But Music Bank was my first live one. Um, and so I was actually, well, not was, still am, a really big fan of this boy group called Ace. Mm. Oh, so, okay, like, okay, okay. Their tag issue was like, Paro Yope to mine. Oh, yeah, okay. And so, like, before, like, this Hangbang song, like, I, like, incensed to them and I gave them an album and everything and talked in my very minimal Korean that I knew at the time. It was very, very, very chunk piece, you know, very chunk piece. Chunk piece. Very chunk piece. Chunk piece. <laughs> chunk piece. Very chunk piece. But, um, yeah, I was having a little moment with that. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. When you, when you when you did go on these uh, TV shows, you know, it's like, I like I remember, I think I'm pretty sure you remember your debut stage, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, of course. Walk us through that. Did, were you like, did you come down and you were like, damn, like I messed it up? Or was it like, that's right, I killed it. Recognized. I mean, because like, like for like the public or general public, uh -huh. they just watch the show and they just mm -hmm. think like, you know, like a person goes on stage and they sing and it's over, right? But for us who actually go on the stage, they're... You have to give up a whole day just to get ready for that one <laughs> stage, right? So, mm -hmm. what was that like when you first went on like a umak bang song? Were you like, why is the system like this? Or, you know, like. I mean, it's not like I was like too problematically curious about the system. I wasn't really questioning things like, oh my God, why are we here at five in the morning and why do I have to sleep at 8 p.m.? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, like, what is a chulgin gil? Like, you know, mm. yeah. that was the one thing I was a little curious about. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think what I was just most curious about was just the overall culture of doing music shows because there is a bit like you know there's a way to do it and there's a way mm -hmm. to not do it yeah yeah so i mean you know thankfully i had my manager my staff that are with me guiding me through they're like okay so when you pass by anybody doesn't matter who they are if you see them 10 times or not you have to like inza bow be bright and shiny you're like a rookie Bushito. exactly yeah exactly <laughs> break your spine break That's your right. spine break your spine we're getting hoodie discs up in here oh, yeah. you know, you know? The, little, the little birds with like this like yeah, this. the little water dripping yeah, bird. Yeah, like, yeah. Bird. like that's, mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, that's you know, that's how you identify who's a new artist. At Your a back show. will literally have a six pack <laughs> at the end because yeah. you'll be doing so many bows, you know. But like, uh, I messed up my debut stage kind of in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, so when I debuted, I wore really big ass, chunky ass platform shoes like mm -hmm. Demonia's. Like, okay. I should you not like maybe this tall? Wow. Okay. And my choreography is very physically demanding. It's always been very physically demanding, and so the first. Thing that's the choreography starts off with is I'm laying on my dancers and they like like throw me off of them basically and I have to land. Stage was a little like Mikaro Wo, you know? <laughs> little Mikaro Wo. Little, little Mikaro Wo. Um and so I like whoop, I I, I slip, I recovered, but like it's very visible, especially yeah. because they filmed it from the above camera. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then I slipped again later on. But uh, it was very embarrassing for me. But that's okay. No, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just, At least you I said you recovered. I, I recovered. Yeah, yeah I recovered. you recovered. Yeah. That's all that matters. As long as you yeah. didn't like fall down and just lay there until the end of the song. Like, you, know? <laughs> uh, well, you know, next time I will. If I, mean, I ever slip, I'm just going <laughs> to... Yeah, sometimes like so, like Look, some of those stages your are company like workers are very afraid right now. They're like they're like, oh no, please don't do that. <laughs> Enablers. <laughs> yeah, please don't just lay on the stage. Uh, Watch me. <laughs> okay, so... You did your debut, and then you released several EPs, including Do or Die, T-Coherence, and recently, Girls Gone Vogue. Now, all artists, they have like, you know, you have your title song. We love the title songs. We love the Wonderlands and the and the Girls and the girls Gone Vogue, or Gone Vogue, and let me do that again. Back in Vogue. <laughs> Back, Back in Vogue, in Vogue Sorry. bitch, excuse you. I'm, I'm just looking at Madonna right now. So I'm gonna, anyway, um, okay. <clears throat> 
Okay, so after you debut, you know, you put out all these albums. You've had a lot of albums already put out. You've had several EPs. She's laughing at me, but <laughs> but what we're not laughing at is her discography because it is insane. Uh, we're going to start. We're going to talk about Do or Die, Decoherence, and Girls Gone Vogue, which you recently finished. Now, aside from your title tracks, which we love, we stand, they are bops, those songs slap. Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> but, but. There's always some songs that are your personal favorites out of your discography. Um, so what's what's some personal favorites that you got? I mean, if we're pushing the title tracks aside. I mean, if you um, like the title tracks, we can do that too. Okay, well, I mean, if I'm being honest, not plugging it because I'm plugging it, but like mm -hmm. uh, Back in Vogue, my most recent track is mm -hmm. my all-time favorite track I've ever had mm -hmm. okay, right cool, now cool. in my entire career. Mm -hmm. uh, my long career of three years. You know what three years is like, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I, let me tell you, she's been out for three years. She's put out like 20,000 songs. I was in the K-pop industry for three years and I put out one song. So, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It is what it is. I, have you ever listened to his song? I have. You uh, have? Yes, because I knew someone that was a fan of Gail's group. Really? Holler, 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 holler. <laughs> How am I just now hearing about this? I thought I told you that when I first met you. I might have been... Any I had a lot of shots then. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not plugging that at all. Mm, no, but no. Uh, back in Vogue aside, uh, my first comeback, I had a B side track called Kitty Run that I'm really fond of. Okay. It's a fun little sassy track. Kitty Run? Kitty Run. Mm, Kitty mm -hmm. Sounds like okay. a phone game. So, you know, Kitty Run. Like, you know. <laughs> Kitty Run, the Crossy Roads. But I like that. Okay. And then, sassy. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I also had a B-side track on my previous album called Obsession that I actually helped write in assistance with Lizzo's sister. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Lizzo, like, mm -hmm. Lizzo be eating Lizzo? Yes, Lizzo oh, be eating Lizzo. Okay, yes. all right. <laughs> nice. I Her respect sister that. and I are tight now, and we've uh, worked together on music, and that song actually got released. So, mm. yeah. What's the name okay. of that again? It's called Obsession. 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 Okay. We're yeah. checking that out. I'm going to yeah. listen to that on the way home. Please do. Thank Everybody you. check out Kitty... Run and obsession, because uh, they're certified bots. Kitty, comma, run, yes. according to Joel. <laughs> no, 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 I was like, uh, Kitty litter box, Kitty what? I was like confused. Kitty. But anyway, listen, we're excited right now here on the Korean Cowboys. Yes. yes. So, so you, you have an extensive discography, right? Um, do you participate in the makings of like most of your songs or all of your songs? Or how, how does the production of an album go for you? I mean, when I first debuted, it was definitely a bit more heavy on the side of the company. But mm -hmm. as time has gone by and I've been able to show my skill set to my company, they've entrusted me now more with like doing like the chakoka and chakusa stuff yeah, for yeah. my songs. Okay, nice. uh, not fully, like none of them are 100% me. But, you know, I'd say for the most part, I release some songs that are like 80% completely me. Okay, well, Some well, are like 50, some are like 20. But I mean, uh, off the recent albums that I've done, I've contributed a lot. And I'm really looking forward to making and releasing my own stuff in the future. Oh, oh we nice. love that. Self-producing queen. We love that. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Self-producing queen. Yes. Okay. Now, let's let's get into the solidifying moment that like really put you out there recently. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Aaron, what you got? 